from our forest anyway. Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 5 of Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, part of the Reignited Trilogy on the Xbox. So, we'll go to the boss. Well done, Spyro. And she doesn't really say anything, she just says the door will open. Anyways, we get another cutscene once we're down here. Before you get to the castle dungeon, Spyro, I thought that you might want to know how Ripto and his monsters arrived in Avalar. You see, last week in the Winter Tundra, the Professor was working on some new Super Portal technology. There! That's the last orb in place. Now let's see. All we need are some coordinates. Yeah? How about 22475? <laughs> That's my birthday. No, Hunter, don't! What? Can't either of you. Where are we? Hmm, no dragons. Wonderful. Crush, go back and pack my bags. We're moving in. Say hello to your new king. Professor, shut it down! Hurry! Oh my, oh my! I can't see the switch! I think I've broken my glasses! Crush! Go through the portal, you idiot! Tell all your friends to take the orbs and scatter them throughout Avalar! Quickly! This is bad news for Avalar. Hunter, why didn't you chase him? Uh, yeah. I, uh, would have gone after him, but didn't he say something about not liking dragons? Professor, could we catch a dragon to help us? Yes, yes, I think so. We'll need a world that has an alignment much better suited to intercepting one of these creatures. How about Glimmer? Oh, so I see. It's all Hunter's fault. Of course it's Hunter's fault. Why wouldn't it be the stinking cheetah? Well, anyways, we got Crush, the first boss of the game. So he has two gimmicks. Well, I guess technically three. You got these blue ones that you have to jump over, and then you have to flame him before he gets to another one, because he's invincible while technically getting ready to attack. And then it'll cause him to cause the wall to, you know, fall down on his head when he has a spaz attack and slams into the ground. That's why you gotta manage your anger, everybody. Sparks, can you stop, like, getting close to the screen and smiling like that? Now, these orange ones, you have to dodge fireballs, so left and right. And then you gotta do the exact same thing again, and just keep doing it. And you get the skill point by not taking any damage. Luckily, this boss isn't too bad. And then on when he's down to three health, these attacks will now produce like three shots. And then he'll start to chase you. My goal or my tip is to get close to him and then run away. Because then it'll make him sm smash that. Now it'll have a mix of each. So this one's the easiest one because it's just jumping over them. So that means you can get relatively close to him. And then you can just abuse that factor. Oh, and he's gonna keep using this one, so that's a good idea. These ones, like I said, are way easier, so... 
if you keep him here, he'll keep going right back to it because he's closest to it. Oh, no, never mind. He decided that one for whatever reason. Thing is, you can't really jump with those ones because, once again... And there we go, we beat him. That's it, that's the first boss. Now, crush! You may have been able to defeat that simpleton, but golf will be more than a match for you! Bring it on, shorty! Go! Come here now! Destroy him and make sure it's painful! What? Go! Get me out of here! So long, dragon! What a wuss! Yeah, so apparently he had some issue with dragons in his home world, so maybe he comes from the dragon realms. It said that he comes from Skeelo's Badlands in one of the games, which is a level in this game, but if, when you go there, it doesn't look like that'd be his home world. Oh, that Ripto has caused enough damage. All his meddling has cost me a fortune. If it wasn't for Spyro, I'd be bankrupt. Whoa. If Ripto were here, I'd give him a piece of my mind. In fact, I'd give him a lot more than that. I was a champion bantamweight boxer at university, and I still know a few moves. Take that! And that! No! He took over World 2, Autumn Plains. Kawoosh. Kawoosh. The adventure continues. Yeah, I don't know why, but this game, and even the third game, have way better loading times than the first game. Anyways, once again, only 400 gems in every level, so it doesn't change. But we do get a lot of cool new levels. We have Crystal Glacier, which is like a prehistoric, like, ice level, obviously on a glacier. Like, who would have thunk that, you know? Um, oh, I'm stuck on that little groove. We got Breeze Harbor, which is a, a level where you have to aid birds and, in, like, getting their warships back up and running. Here, we actually have the ability to climb. And if you notice, we now have portals, like, weird little platform portals that'll bring us back to the home world, which shows that we're missing one of the four orbs, which is really cool. And those are only used to get to the home world. I believe you can also warp to any level you want through the guidebook, so you don't actually have to backtrack a lot. So once we complete this level, we can just teleport ourselves to the levels that we haven't fully beat yet, and we can do it that way. I thought that was a cool little touch. We're gonna spend a lot of gems while we're here, though. We're gonna be, like, dirt broke soon. This is the most gem-heavy, like, portion of the game, with both collecting and spending. So, for example, we have to spend some here. Legend has it that there is a portal to Zephyr here. And legend also has it that I know how to activate it. Furthermore, as I recall, the legend mentioned something about me activating it for a, a small fee. Yeah, 400 gems. Thanks for the gems, Spyro. With all this cash, I can open a lizard burger shop in Skelos Badlands. And there's Zephyr. It's essentially the partner level to Breeze Harbor, but instead of helping the birds, you're helping the worms. And Skelos Badlands is the counterpart to Crystal Glacier, but once again, you're just helping the cavemen. Like, it's not one of those levels where, um... Like, you're helping the opposite side. It's kind of like... Uh, Sunny Beach and Aquaria Towers, where you're both just helping aquatic life forms deal with the water workers who want to drain water, or in that case, capture turtles. So now we did see a Laura over here, so we'll talk to her. Well done, Sp she doesn't say anything. She just says the orbs, you know, activated this, which is Metro Speedway, which is like a a weird water city based speedway level. It's kind of a weird one. It's not a bad level. It is probably the most difficult of the four, though. 
so that might not be very fun to do, but we can dock the money bags. Well, well, I bet a rich dragon like you wouldn't mind cashing in a few gems to learn how to climb. I'd be willing to teach you for, say, oh, I don't know, a small fee. Can you stop saying small fee? It's 500 gems. That's not small. We only have 1,200 gems after this. You won't regret it. Okay, when you see a wall surface that looks climbable, like the one to my left here, just jump onto it and you will grab it with your claws. Use the left stick to move up and down. Press the jump button again to leap off. You can also jump sideways onto another climbable area. And in Spyro, it's always a ladder. Oh yeah, I forgot. One thing that they did to the Reignited Trilogy is they made climbing really slow. Remember how I complained about Wrath of Cortex for doing that exact same thing? Yeah, luckily though, you can jump in Spyro, so... Yeah, it's a little better. Then we have Scorch, which is kind of an interesting level. You have to help two kids defeat evil bad guys that... That level is kind of questionable. It almost makes you seem like you're the bad guy. Fracture Hills is a Scottish-based level where you have to defeat Earthshapers. And yeah, that just opens up that door. Uh, this is Magma Cone, another level where you have to defeat um, uh, Earthshapers with the same creatures from Fracture Hills, but in a volcano. Those are the males. The it's kind of weird. Also, we got another money bags, and we still have to pay him once more after this too. It's crazy. I can let you into the little castle over there in exchange for a few gems. What do you say? Eh, 400. Jeez. No one's been through that portal in years. I never thought I'd find a sucker. I, I mean, <clears throat> you're a shrewd customer, Spyro. Now, normally, you'd have to take that as an insult, but... Now, weird thing is, Shady Oasis actually has no tie into any other level. If you notice, every other level... I guess, I guess you can kind of count it as Scorch. It's like the evil spirit version of Scorch, I guess. It takes place in a desert and stuff like that, and... Yeah, I, I don't really know. Like, it's kind of weird. Now, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to sk get the skill point on the second boss in this game, because I don't know if I've ever gotten it. It's extremely difficult. So, now we have to go over here to Moneybags again. I think he only charges you 100 for this one, though. So it's kind of like the shark submarine from last episode. I would love to let you enter this speedway free of charge, Spyro. Love to. Unfortunately, the speedway rules require me to charge a, a small fee. No, no they don't, but here you go. You've chosen wisely. I bet a quick dragon like you will win your money back in no time. Well, yeah, I'll be up 300 gems, but... Um, you charged me well over a grand here, so, yeah, about that. Anyways, that speedway is just kind of like Crystal Glacier, but a speedway. It even has cavemen and stuff in it, too. It, that one's actually kind of pretty, plus the mini game there for Hunter is actually pretty fun. Now, we haven't gotten a single orb, and we still have to get a bunch of gems, so you're probably wondering where we have to go. Well, we actually have to go up top. Also, the music here is pretty just chill. It kind of reminds me of a comment I got on my channel. They're like, um, you know, nice mellow content. Probably because, like, I never do anything over the top. Now, you actually have to glide way over here. And if you want the achievement for this level, it's actually gliding to this island. Now, the background here, I don't know what it is. Like, if it's just, like, the weird kind of cracked-looking hills or stuff like that. And it's just beautiful. And then there's, like, 75 gems just right there on its own. I can't remember if there's any gems at the like this end of the uh, pathway. Okay, no. It's just directly this way. The other orb is literally right here. And I mentioned this before in a lot of Spyro games, and that goes for Enter the Dragonfly, Hero's Tale, Spyro 1, Spyro 3, uh, the Game Boy games, all those. You notice that there's a lot of like stuff just clustered together. Like Both orbs in this level, because there's only two, are literally right together. So there we go, we 100% complete this level. Now, what we can do is we can go to the guidebook. Yeah, see it says travel of A. We can now go back to Summer Forest, but we're gonna go back to Glimmer first. We're gonna go do this. So the rest of this episode will be backtracking, because we completed a boss, got a bunch of cutscenes, and we're gonna be finishing off a bunch of levels. But, we do need to kill the enemies here again. 
because we do need the super or the supercharge. The, the, the glide. Have we even? No, yeah, we used the supercharge already. I was gonna be like, did I spoil that ability? But no, no, no. Supercharge was used in Idle Springs. I've, also, there is a cutscene here, but you can only get it if you revisit this level. So that'll be something that we could. Uh, I always wanted to use it for the thumbnail, but I never get to because of the fact that um, it would. It's just way easier to use Crush and Gulp and Ripto and stuff for the cuts or for the uh, thumbnails. I love games that have cutscenes that don't like minimize the uh, the screen or anything or like shrink it down because it makes for great thumbnails without actually like um, using clickbait. And I, people, I don't know if they come because they see the the thumbnail or the title. Yeah, we we already know. It's nothing special. This is the gem I always forget, by the way, because Sparks, for whatever reason, doesn't pick it up. Also, it's funny how I can hear the lizards. Like, the little lizards, not the, um... The big lizards. Now, I don't remember if you actually have to, for the achievement here, if you only have to do the first one of these, uh, challenges, or if you do the, um... Second one, too, to get it, but... That's essentially how you get it. And there we go! There's the final orb here! Right on, bro. Thanks for helping me light the lamp, Spyro! For a while, I was afraid we were going to have to cancel tonight's baseball game. Here, somebody mix this orb in with the baseballs. At least, like, I like when they know what the orbs are. Because it makes them not sound so stupid. But there we go, that's all three orbs here. Now we just have to come over here to the gems, and as long as I didn't miss any throughout the level normally, we should have every single gem here. And there we go. The complete level. Also, by the way, if you fly through here, your power-up actually disappears. See? It just drains. We got 100% here, right? I didn't even pay attention. But, anyways, now we can go in here. So that way I can trigger the cutscene. Plus, we have to go back to Summer Forest anyway. Funny thing is, those little red lizards actually come back in Spyro. So I'm not actually entirely sure if they're exclusive to the Dragon Realms or not. Like, or if they came from the Dragon Realms or if they came from Avalar to the Dragon Realms. Because you deal with them in a level called Sunny Villa when you have to do a cool new little minigame type challenge. I'm not going to spoil it because it's completely unique to that game. And I don't think it's ever used again in any Spyro game. Which, that game actually introduced quite a few unique little gimmicks, and then some more just stale stuff like they do in every video game ever. But, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Now, yeah, you say there's something shiny up here, I really don't want to talk to you. See how the ladders look, though? Like, this one actually matches this room, which I thought was super cool. We should be able to get the 10 gems here, so we only need three more, and there's the final orb. Yeah, and there's all the gems. And that should be 100% complete on this level too. Yeah, now we can go to Sunny Beach and go do the challenge here. Now you don't need this, the breath power up or anything like that, so we can just go back here. Also, I don't get why the last level didn't do the total. And we don't need to see the cutscene again, because we've already seen it. We do, however, have to do these guys again, which is annoying. But as for the rest of the level, we've officially done everything. So, we just need to get back to where we climb up the ladder. Which is right here. Wait, why are you going now? Wait, where's he going? I'm taking damage because he decided to go the wrong way for whatever reason. Now, let's see if this guy actually turns back. Why is he taking forever? Like, I'm so confused. Anyways, one thing I like about this ladder, and I know I'm going on about ladders, is that it's like kind of crooked. It kind of looks cool. Like, it, it gets kind of unique in its own way, and that's it. The rest of the gems are literally in the next section, which is kind of funny that uh, they put just a few gems there. They're just like, yeah, here, you, you need to use the climb ability. And now, he actually doesn't give you the challenge, by the way. Get out of here. Nobody wants to talk to you, buddy. 
He's the one who gives you the challenge. But I want to grab all the gems first, which are just down here in this little pool. And there we go. All the gems. We're only 1,100 gems. We had over 2,000. We had 2,023 at the start of this episode, by the way. Your turtle friends will make a very good soup if I can catch them. You can try to save them if you like, but I'm feeling all flay hungry. Yeah, so then you just have to do this twice. This one's pretty easy. Also, in the original, it had a top-down view, like on the uh, PS1 version, which was way better. Because it allowed you to see these guys way easier. Yeah, you can also flame them, but it, they don't go as far. Charging them is like a thousand times better. Now, what I recommend is you kind of wait till they're close to the pot, or cauldron, whatever you want to call it, and then do that. And that should be it. It's only three for the first one. So you saved a few turtles. There are more where those came from. Here, take this orb and go away. Okay, Mr. Cajun Master Chef. Nice. And then you gotta retalk to him. If you step any closer to the pot, I'll start ringing my bell again. I don't know if this one's necessarily a 5. I'd give it like a 4, maybe. But honestly, it's not that bad. Alright, buddies. There we go. Uh, which one's next? Oh, this is one. Yeah, and you actually have to be kind of patient. This one is one of the longer challenges that doesn't force you to spend an entire level. Oh. Oh, that guy's not going to make it in. Definitely not when he ended up there. Can you stop bouncing back to the, the cauldron, please? Yeah, so you can do that to angle him whatever way you want, and then charge him. So, like, for example, we could do this, so he faces that way, and then launch him that way. These ones over here, though, are the easiest, because they're, like, right next to the water. Next one should be this one, right? Oh, yeah, it is. They kind of just teleport out, too. They... That didn't actually change his direction at all, for whatever... Okay. No, he's not going to fall in? Why wouldn't he fall in, man? Flame Breath of Death! Go! Fire in the hole! Oh, the easy turtle. I like these ones over here, because they're just super easy to knock in. And we did it! Rats! You saved every turtle on the beach! Here, take this. I was going to use it to buy potatoes. But now I don't need it. Well, thank you for the third and final orb, and now we have 100% complete World 1. Excelente. So, I guess now, um, it's a good time to end the episode. But I guess we'll go back to Autumn Plains. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and Patreon on the links below. Remember, you guys can spend a whole $5 to make me play a game that you guys want and then i'm gonna have a tier if you pay 10 bucks or it might be more than that to 100 percent complete a game because some games are suck at completing but anyways i'll see you guys next time Bye bye